Hi, friends. My name is Celine, and my mom is my best friend. She was a small businesswoman, but after she divorced my dad, her luck turned around and she made it big. Mom adored me. By the time I was seven, I was living the life of a Malibu Barbie. She got me everything I wanted. She threw a birthday bash for me that had ponies and hot air balloons in it. My friends were shocked. Once when I was in second grade, I had a fight with my annoying classmate, and mom was called to the school to meet the teacher, who I hated. Celine needs some discipline. Just look at what she did to her classmate. Maybe she needs a father to teach her some manners. Get her one. My mom suddenly went ballistic and pushed the teacher away. Are you a moron? My daughter doesn't need a father. She has me, and I can take care of her. You say nonsense like that again, and I'll have you fired. I was so proud of my mom as she took my hand and stormed off. By the time I was in fourth grade, my mom was my best friend. I used to tell her every single freaking thing that happened to me. But once, I made a mistake. I told her how I'd seen my friend Jessica take the teacher's watch and put it in her bag. And a few days later, I invited my friends to my house. When we were all having lunch, I heard a loud scream from my room. We all ran there to find mom holding Jessica's hand. You can't fool me, kid. I know you stole your teacher's stuff. And now you're snooping in my daughter's room. Oh my god! Jessica was shaking and in tears. Mom, she had to go to the bathroom. I told her to go to my room. When my friends left, I was so angry at mom. I told her I won't be telling her anything from now on. Even though she apologized, I ran to my room and slammed the door shut. The next day at school, my friends started avoiding me like I was some weirdo. And this mean Jessica said, No, you can't sit with us because you tell all our secrets to your mom. Why are you like that, dumbhead? I started eating alone, but one day, something amazing happened. A girl came and sat next to me at lunch. Her name was Ashley, and she was new in the school. Soon we became friends, and it was so good having someone to talk to. A few days later, I saw Jessica wearing my bracelet that mom had specially gotten made for me. Hey, that's mine! That bracelet has my name on the back! You're such a thief! I grabbed her wrist to take it away, but Jessica pushed me hard and pounced on me. Just then, Ashley came running and snatched the bracelet from her. We reported her to the principal, and she took a look into Jessica's locker. She was stunned to see so many stolen items. Jessica was suspended for two weeks, and I felt so foolish. Mom had been right about Jessica all along. When I went home, I apologized to mom and she hugged me tight. By the time we were in 10th grade, Ashley and I were best friends. Once she was at my place and we were discussing my new crush, Adam, when mom walked in. I was so excited to tell her too and showed her all his pictures on Facebook. I can't believe you just told your mom about your crush. I would never tell my mom such a thing. A few days later, mom came to school and she spotted Adam with some boys. And then she hmm? said the most embarrassing thing ever. Oh, you're Adam, right? This is Celine and she's my daughter. Oh, yeah, that weirdo. What did you just call her? A weirdo, and I think she's also dumb. Oh my god, you're such a rude kid. I can't believe she has a crush on you. And she even looks at your pictures on Facebook all day? For what? You're a jerk, I can tell. Everybody, including Adam, looked at me like I was some psycho stalker. I grabbed mom's arm and tried to drag her away. Oh, so Celine is crazy, just like her mom. Just let me teach this loser a lesson. Mom tried to attack him, but thankfully, I was able to drag her away. At home, I had a huge fight with mom about it. I did the right thing, Celine. The only thing you did was ruin my life. Mom asked for forgiveness, and I knew mom meant well. So after a few hours, I forgave her and we hugged, but not for long. A couple of months later, we were having a Mother's Day event at our school. And when it was time for Ashley to give her mom the gift in front of everyone, mom rushed to Ashley's mom and handed her a bag. She had gotten a matching outfit for her and Ashley. I was so sorry to hear from Celine about your money problems and the divorce. You must be going through a really hard time right now. That's why I bought the nicest dresses for you and Ashley. Oh my god! How could she blurt that secret out in front of everybody? Ashley and her mom were stunned. So were all the people in the classroom. Suddenly, Ashley was furious. She attacked me and held my hair tight in her grip. How could you tell your mom about it? You know she can't keep a secret! Why did I ever trust you? Even Ashley's mom was furious and she screamed at mom, calling her bad names. And that day, I lost my best friend. She just refused to talk to me, and a week later, she and her mom moved away without even saying goodbye. I was heartbroken, and my relationship with my mom was never the same. Celine, please forgive me. It was an honest mistake. Mom, enough is enough! You betrayed my trust and hurt other people. You can't just say it's a mistake every time. I can't do this anymore. I moved out of the mansion when I turned 18 and got admission in university. I got busy with studies and mom and I spoke less and less frequently. 
Luckily for me, I found love and got married after graduating. I was living a happy life with my husband, Andrew. After graduating, I opened up an art gallery with Andrew, and the exhibitions I held were famous all over town. After two years, we were blessed with a little baby girl. We named her Crystal. She had a star-shaped birthmark behind her ear, and I just loved kissing it. She was my world! One day when I returned from work, I saw Andrew park up his new Porsche. I was stunned. Sure, we both earned well, but not that well. Something was off about Andrew. I walked into his new home office and heard him talk to some girl. Oh, babe, I love you too. You think I'm in love with her? I am living with her only for the money. I went berserk on Andrew. I made him tell me the truth. The way he did, I felt the earth shake beneath my feet. My mom had been sending him money, and that's why he was with me. Wow, he loved someone else. First, I kicked Andrew out of the house. I was done with him. Then I called up mom. Why can't you just stop interfering with my life? Why did you give money to Andrew? But honey, Andrew asked me for money. He said he would leave you if I didn't give him the money. You knew he didn't love me and you didn't tell me? Mom, that's awful. You think giving him money was right? I told her never to send money again and hung up. I just wanted to focus on raising Crystal. Now that life was set, Crystal and I became best friends. When she was four, I took her to Disneyland and we had a blast. I even got a star tattooed behind my ear, just like Crystal's birthmark. Mommy, we have the same mark now. I love you. After a few days, it was time to go home. When our plane landed, we needed to take the train to get home. As I was buying tickets, I suddenly turned around and saw Crystal wasn't there. I went crazy. I searched for my baby girl all over the station, but I didn't find her. People started to help me look for her, and soon the cops arrived on the scene too. I just sat down on a bench, crying with shock. I couldn't believe that my daughter was missing. I took my phone out and called the only person I could think of. I need you to come immediately, Mom. The minute she arrived, I broke down in tears and hugged her tight. I'm so sorry, Mom. Now I realize the pain of being away from your child. I am so sorry. Hush, Selene. You have nothing to be sorry about. Don't worry, love. We will find my granddaughter. But days turned into weeks, and my baby girl was nowhere to be found. It had been many months since Crystal was missing, when a familiar-looking woman visited me at home, and when our eyes met, we were both shocked. Ashley, is that you? Oh my god, Celine! I'm the detective handling your daughter's case. We hugged each other tight as we both started to cry. Don't worry, we will get her back, I promise. For five years, we searched for Crystal day and night. Everywhere I went, I would see my daughter. One day, I was walking towards the police station where Ashley worked, when suddenly, I heard a voice. A voice so sweet that it shook me. Hey mom, wait up, I'm coming! I turned around and saw a girl who looked so much like Crystal. Oh my god, it was my baby girl, all grown up! Without a second thought, I ran to the girl and took her arm, and she started screaming. Mom, Dad, help! Sweetie, just let me look at your ear. Turned out, it was not Crystal and her parents furiously took her away, and I was heartbroken all over again. I was almost beginning to lose hope. I met mom at the park that night and cried on her chest. Mom, it hurts, mom. It's burning. I miss my baby. I'm so sorry for treating you badly. You were my best friend. I now understand how much I hurt you. Mom, I just want my baby back. Mom, I couldn't believe what I just heard. I looked around to see Ashley, and next to her was a 9 or 10 year old girl, looking confused. The moment I saw her, I knew it was my crystal. I ran to hug her, but the girl took some steps back. Mom had a tattoo like mine behind her ear. Show it to me if you are my mom. I showed her the star tattoo, and she gave me a huge smile and flung herself in my arms. Mom! I missed you so much! Why did you leave me? You don't love me! Oh, baby girl. I love you so much, and I look so hard for you. I missed you. I missed you. Ashley told me that my baby had gone on a train to another city, where a couple had found her wandering alone and crying, and they'd taken her in. Since then, they had been trying to search for her family. I pulled mom to join our hug, and also Ashley. I love you guys so much. All my best friends are back now. I love you, Crystal. I love you too, mommy. Hi there, I'm Saul from San Francisco. 
please like and subscribe because My Story Animated will give $1,000 to one lucky person in the coming seven days. When I was only two, mom left dad because his business was failing miserably, and she didn't want to be with someone poor. But growing up, dad adored me and made sure I had everything. But over the next few years, he turned really lucky and his business was booming again. And just like that, we were richer than ever. We had a super big mansion, fancy cars, and butlers. On my fourth birthday, Dad said he had a big surprise for me, and I was super excited for it. But then he introduced me to his girlfriend, Linda. Aw, Saul, you're adorable, baby girl. Ew, she was so weird. But very soon, I discovered that she was a witch too. The second dad would turn his back, she would go all crazy on me. <laughs> you look like a filthy boy from a slum. And what's with your ugly hair? Ew. But dad wouldn't listen to a word against her. He was so blindly in love. Soon after, they got married, and the first thing Linda did was transfer all of dad's money to her name. A year later, she gave birth to Tanya, who was the cutest, but slowly, Linda started revealing her real face to dad too. One day, while dad was getting ready for a business trip, Linda went all bonkers on him. I have a night out with my friends, and you want me to take these good-for-nothing kids with me? You better stay home and do it yourself. Don't talk to me like you're my boss. It's because of me that you get to enjoy all these luxuries. I work hard and I feed everyone here, so don't give me that attitude. Oh, who says I'm not the boss? Saying that, she threw the property papers in his face and asked him to leave her house. This was crazy, but what dad did was even crazier. He left us forever, and I had to put up with my witchy stepmom. Now, Linda would spend all of dad's money on shopping and her parties all day long and not even care about Tanya. So I made sure to look after her, and over time, we grew quite close. One day, Tanya fell sick, and I asked Linda to go get her some medicine. But when she came back, her hands were full of shopping bags. And worse, she didn't get the medicine. Seriously, Linda? I can't believe you're doing this to your own daughter now. Okay, I forgot. What's the big deal anyway? It's just a fever. It'll go away on its own. But the important thing is, what will I wear for tomorrow's party? Whoa, this woman was something. Years passed and Tanya started going to school with me, but I was concerned about her grades. So I went to her room to help her with the upcoming tests, but Linda didn't seem happy about it. Why are you trying to make her a geek like you? Isn't it enough that she has the biggest glasses on her nose? For God's sake, let her be like me. Growing up and finding a rich husband, that's what smart women do. Ugh, she was horrible and Tanya was nothing like her so I made sure to help her when Linda wasn't around. Then one snowy evening, I thought Tanya was outside having snow fights with the neighborhood kids, but what I saw left me shocked. I realized all the kids had ganged up on her and were throwing snowballs at her face. Take this, loser. OMG, he was so done. I ran out and picked up a huge chunk of snow and threw it at him. Don't you dare hurt my sister, dummy. I chased all the stupid kids away and took Tanya inside. A few moments later, Linda walked in, and I told her all about it. So, what should I do? And what did you expect, really? Of course kids are gonna bully her for looking like a loser nerd. Linda, are you crazy? You're her mother! Do something! You want me to do something? Fine. From today, she won't go to school and anywhere outside. And then, there'll be no more problems. What? How could she do that? Tanya ran up to her room in tears, and I went after her. Don't worry, little sis. I'll get you out of here. But, but, but how? She'd ground me forever if she finds out. Well, then she will never find out. That's when an idea hit me. If I kept Linda distracted, she wouldn't care about us. I swapped Linda's shampoo with green dye, and the next morning, she looked like the freaking Grinch as she ran to the salon in her bathrobe. Tanya and I laughed our butts off and headed off to school. I'd find more ways to keep Linda busy. Later that day, when I went to the school cafeteria to have lunch with Tanya, she didn't show up for quite some time. Just then, I heard someone crying from under the table. I bent down and saw Tanya. Hey, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Come on out. That boy, that cherry, he took my glasses and pushed me. I couldn't see anything, and everyone started laughing. 
So, I hid here. Oh, God. I marched straight to the boys' table and pulled him up by his shirt. Let me show you who the real gangster is, kid. Whoa, easy, easy, please. What's wrong? I turned around to see Sebastian, a new student who had just joined my class. This guy has been bullying my little sister, and I'm here to teach him a lesson. OMG, I'm, I'm so sorry. He's my younger brother, and I'll, I'll make sure to teach him better. It's just that we're new here, and he's having a tough time adjusting. But I promise, he won't do it again. He immediately grabbed the glasses from his little brother's hand and put them on Tanya. Well, that was sweet. Later during class, he apologized to me again, and I kind of felt I was too harsh with his brother. Hey, listen, it's just that I'm too attached to Tanya. I feel more like a mom to her, so I couldn't see her crying, and it's all right. I totally understand. Turns out, he and his brother were a lot like us. Their mother passed away long ago, and their dad was always away for work, and that connected us instantly. He also suggested that we all go sledding in the evening so that our siblings could get along. It sounded like a great idea, and the four of us actually had a lot of fun together that evening. But as soon as we reached home, I was shocked to find Linda all flared up in anger. You all think you're smart enough to play your little pranks on me? Well, now it's my turn. Tanya, you're grounded forever. No school, no friends, and finally, no sister. Cause Saul's moving to an orphanage right now. What? Why? You can't do that. Mom, no, please don't say that. She's my sister and your daughter. No, she isn't. Not anymore. I have signed off the papers and gave up her guardianship. Now she's an orphan. So pack up your bags and leave my house, Saul, before I kick you out. No, you can't make me leave. I tried to fight her for Tanya's sake, but that evil witch made the guards throw my stuff out of the house and now, I had no other option but to leave the house and Tanya. While I was leaving, Tanya kept screaming at me from the balcony. Please, don't go, Saul. What will I do without you? It was hard for me to see her in tears, but I promised her I'd come back for her someday. After that, I kept walking for hours until it started raining and I stopped at a restaurant. Just then, the waitress came in and asked me what I wanted to eat. Well, I don't have any money, so I'm afraid I won't be able to order anything but she sneaked me some hot chocolate from the counter and told me it was on her. She seemed like a really nice lady and even asked me if I wanted a job. A job? That'll be great. I didn't want to go to the orphanage and this way I could earn some money too. So I started working there as a waitress. The lady also offered me a place to live and I kind of felt like I'd found a new home. Days passed and I even learned some basic tailoring and designing from the old waitress. Within a month, I was able to design beautiful dresses and sweatshirts out of old rugged clothes. One day while I was serving coffee to one of the customers, I accidentally spilled some over her dress. Are you blind? That's a designer piece. She seemed really mad, so I'd said I'd get her something to wear. I ran to the storage room where I had all my designs, and since I couldn't pick one for her, I carried them all to her. Oh my God, these are amazing. Who made them? I did. She looked awestruck by my talent and told me she was a world-famous designer herself. Her name was Angelica Martino. And then she offered me a job as a designer. This was freaking awesome. I couldn't believe my ears. I took this opportunity and followed her to Italy and joined her massive company. And within months, I was making more money than I'd expected. Honestly, I was quite happy, but I always felt that there was something missing from my life. Tanya. I told Angelica I wanted to visit San Francisco, but she wouldn't let me. I can't let anyone go just like that. We have business to do here. And if you still want to go, you can. But then I won't give you any credits for your designs, girl. What? Why had she turned into a Karen? But I wasn't going to take that rubbish from her. I stormed out of her office taking all my savings and cutting up all the designs I made for the company so they couldn't use them. Yeah. And I could hear the witch Angelica's screams as far up as the plane. As soon as I landed in the city, I crashed into someone I'd never imagined. Sebastian. Saul, is that you? Oh my god, I was so worried. I had no idea where you'd gone. Are you okay? Suddenly, I burst into tears and told him everything that happened. And he asked me to move into his place with him and Jerry. I said yes, and he took me to his huge mansion. And seeing the brothers taking care of each other, 
made me think about Tanya even more. So I went to see her the first thing in the morning with Sebastian, but I was super shocked to see her all alone. She ran towards me as soon as she saw me and burst into tears. Oh, Saul, where were you? I missed you so much. You said you'd come back for me, and I waited for you every single minute of every day. I felt so lonely without you. I missed you too, little sis. I thought about you every single day, and I'm so sorry that I made you 